Hello, I'm Dr. Susan Nash, and I'm so excited to have a chance to talk to you today a little bit about the way that crafts, both the ones that we practice and those that were practiced by our families, have been influential in establishing who we are as a person and also in preserving the cultural legacy that we, um, we now see as in sort of terms of the crafts themselves, but then also when we start digging a bit, we can uncover sort of myster mysterious pasts and, and often things that, that were not necessarily passed down in the way that the artifacts are, but they are stories of survival and stories of, of identity, of preserving identity or even changing identity. So let's just take a look at some of the crafts that, that we might be thinking about. Um, one of the things that, that many times we kind of take for granted are things like um, quilts and also embroidery and beading. But as we can see, many times, for example, in the case of a, a star quilt, those have turned into not just things that are, were necessary for survival, but also uh, they are used for, for honoring and, and um, appreciating people who've done great things in, in the community. And we have things like carving, the little hedgehog, and we have things like um, cross stitch embroidery and also um, lace making or crocheting. And then in the past, people made moccasins and also did intricate beadwork. And, and then even here we have somebody, not necessarily in the past, <laughs> carving with a chainsaw. So let's start by thinking about what our goal is. Our goal is to write an essay that explores the relationship between crafts, identity, emotional well-being, and survival. So step one is to describe the crafts that you've been involved with, starting with the ones that you enjoyed as a child. So first we'll start with identifying. So put paints, and I think we all can relate to that. Also, um, I remember doing a lot of beading when I was um, a little girl. Then I graduated to doing um, embroidery, and this embroidery is kind of puffy embroidery. It looks like it has some Brazilian embroidery, which is cool for making um, flower things that, that are three-dimensional. And then finally, I remember I got involved in, in hand sewing books and craft books. And so when I was doing them, I always had in mind what I could do to make them really special and beautiful. And I thought of the outcome. But I also had in mind kind of a magical world that I wanted to enter that world through the crafts. So for example, in, in embroidery, I often thought of myself as being transported in time or to another place. For example, in Brazilian embroidery, embroidery, I thought of myself as being in northeastern Brazil, um, creating these beautiful um, embroidered blouses. And then second, what happened, what were some of the things that your mother enjoyed practicing with crafts? Well, my mother loved cross-stitch. So here's this E pluribus unum. She had embroidered an entire um, beautiful patriotic um, wall hanging that she framed and, and we were definitely not allowed to harm in any way. She also sometimes got involved with um, flower arranging, mainly for bluebirds and campfire girls where she would be involved in organizing crafts, also in Sunday school and, and um, Wednesday night um, classes. Then um, there we, we also painted coasters and potholders, that, that was fun. I still even have some of the stencils on, and the, the um, that was from Sam so long ago. And then she also was a wee blower or uh, a den mother. So she got involved in my brother's Cub Scout crafts. And so they loved doing um, tooling leather. 
So those were basically gr family or group activities, except for the cross stitch, which she did by herself. Now let's think about the crafts that our ancestors practiced. And I think what's interesting about it is that many of the crafts were totally functional. So they were to make things that we that people used more decorative. And so they were they were like an expression of love and an expression of creating an ideal home. So I think about the stencils and the shaker furniture, also in the hammered um, water jugs. Now in the case of spurs, I think that is probably partly also just to be fancy <laughs> to show some style. And they, yes, they were probably necessary for survival, but they were a way to show style in the, in the Great West. And they enhanced the experience of riding your horse, and, and especially if you were dressing up. In the case of blankets, um, the colors, the color patterns, the, the beauty of the, the, the weaving. But then let's look at something quite interesting. Let's look at a quilt. Quilt in this slide is from, um, that. well, it incorporates the patterns that African American slaves used, and they supposedly were, well, according to National Geographic and others, they actually showed some almost like maps or codes or locations. I don't know how to read them, but there have been some presentations. So let's reflect and just to carry out, sort of follow up, the picture is a presentation from a presentation by Flo Stevenson in Longview, Texas. She's part of the Pleasant Hill Quilting Group. And she was showing how American slaves used a quilt code to navigate the Underground Ra Railroad. This is from a National Geographic article. Apparently there's some, some debate, some questioning there, so I don't know. But it really helps us think about the relationship between a craft and one's sense of self. If you were a person who quilted the quilt, then you really wanted to help people escape slavery and, and find freedom. Also, if you are one of those who are preserving the quilt, you would carry on the family traditions and memory, memories of family members, and it would give you a chance to acknowledge their values and what they cared about. And then also we can look at crafts as kind of not only a map, to in the Underground Railroad, but a map of cultural heritage and beliefs, et cetera. So I think that as you write your, your essay that explores the relationship between crafts, identity, emotional well-being, and survival, think about the emotional response that you have when you are practicing a craft or looking back at the crafts that others um, others were um, involved in. So thank you very much for, for listening to this mini lecture. And what I'd like you to do now is to take out a piece of paper and to, to uh, reflect on some of the things that you have been encouraged to think about. So think about crafts that you have practiced, your mother, your ancestors or relatives and um, write them down and start brainstorming and inventing, uh, do kind of a mind map. And also if you're, if you're um, working with a, a collaborative group, share these on either a discussion board or um, in, in, in your um, sharing space. So thank you and I look forward to reading you're writing.